Hey there, welcome. This is a part of an informative video series presented to you by Wizlats. In this video, you will learn how to control and optimize Google Cloud Costs. Whether you have recently migrated to the cloud or you've been operating there for a while now, you must have realized how challenging it can be to understand exactly where your cloud spends go and what drives your costs. This is where cloud optimization comes into the picture. Cloud optimization. The process of correctly identifying and assigning the appropriate resources to a task or application is known as cloud optimization. When workload productivity, quality and expenses are correctly and continually matched against the finest architecture in real time, efficiency is achieved. Infrastructure requirements for each application and workload are distinct and these requirements change over time. When selecting resources for a workload, domain knowledge is generally used to establish baseline performance, but all workloads that have been manually matched to cloud resources can benefit and be further improved using machine intelligence. How do cloud providers calculate their fees? When you request a quote from an IAS cloud provider, it's critical to understand how they price their services. Network computing and storage are the three major cost centers in a cloud environment. Network, rack unit cost, compute per GB of virtual RAM, storage, cost per GB of virtual disk. Only then will the real solution to how to price cloud services emerge. Let us now look into it. A. Migrating components. It is not required to move every component of your business when your website is being migrated to the cloud. Some of the components can be kept on premises. This will assist you in saving a significant amount of money. However, you must be aware of the prices of your cloud provider to do so. One can also consider keeping a fixed hybrid infrastructure for this purpose. On premises and cloud based functions will be included in such an infrastructure. B. Changes that must be made during deployment. When a company migrates to the cloud, it often necessitates a lot of modifications. Your cloud hosting provider may not support some of the applications since it is obsolete. It is recommended that such issues be identified before establishing cloud computing fees. C. Third party help. Because migrating to the cloud is not a simple operation, it occasionally necessitates the assistance of a third party support system. The fees charged by third party consultants can be substantial. Secure data integration and migration. Data is an organization's most valuable asset. When data is incorporated via the cloud, it must be double checked. A single danger to the data has the potential to entirely destroy it. Getting the same quantity of data in its original format can cost a lot of money. Network, rack unit cost. Cloud providers calculate the cost of maintaining the network when determining the price. They begin by estimating labor, network hardware and network infrastructure maintenance costs. These costs are totaled and split by the number of rack units a company will require for their IAS cloud. These expenses are influenced by several factors including costs of network hardware. Each virtual server necessitates the purchase of specific types of network hardware by the provider. They purchase the hardware and depreciate the cost over the life of the gadget. Maintenance expenditures for network infrastructure include security technologies such as firewalls, LAN switching, patch panels, load balancers, routing and uplinks. All of the hardware that keeps the network working smoothly. Labor. The cost of maintaining, managing, monitoring and troubleshooting cloud computing infrastructure by employees. To ensure the cloud environment's uptime and availability, these teams should be available 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Compute per GB of virtual RAM. Each company has its own set of criteria, including the utilization of the CPU. Most providers determine the cost of CPU by calculating the cost per GB of virtual RAM for each firm, which includes using the hardware. Providers 
Calculate the cost per rack unit of your hardware by dividing the total amount of virtual RAM deployed in their public clouds by the cost per rack unit of your hardware. Depending on your virtual operating system, you may have to pay for the license and usage-based subscriptions. Hardware Acquisition This calculation informs your provider of the cost of acquiring hardware for each GB of virtual RAM you want to use. They also amortize these expenditures over the life of the device. Storage Cost per GB of virtual disk The supplier evaluates the cost of operating your storage hardware as well as the cost of acquiring additional storage hardware to meet your needs. Cost sharing Your pricing quote isn't just based on your specific cloud computing infrastructure costs. Your quotation includes a portion of the cost of powering and cooling the underlying infrastructure for the IAS platform in the data center, just like it does for IAS cloud users. Software licensing, hosting, support and other service components may all be included in your pricing quote. IAS is so cost effective because it shares these expenses with other enterprises in the public cloud. The best practices for lowering cloud costs 1. Remove any block storage disks that aren't connected. A block storage disk is normally associated with a virtual machine when it is launched in Google Compute Engine. Even when the VM has been stopped, the disk can continue to run even if it is no longer linked to anything. Unattached block storage disks must be found and removed as soon as possible. 2. Remove photos, those are no longer in need. Snapshots are an example of an asset that is affordable in and of itself but can drive up GCP expenses if allowed to accumulate. The second recommendation you have for lowering GCP expenses is to detect and delete obsolete snapshots that are no longer useful. Remove IP addresses that are no longer in use. When you reserve a static external IP address, there is no price while you are using it. However, Google charges after it is no longer in use. It's best to track them down and delete them. 4. Destroy zombie assets. Zombie resources are infrastructure components, those are operating in the cloud but aren't being utilized. Components attached to a VM that fail to load are the most common. But they can also include idle load balancers and SQL databases. Locate and eliminate them once more. 5. Right-size Compute Engine Virtual Machines Over-provisioning of Compute Engine VMs is a typical reason for higher-than-anticipated GCP bills. It can be intentional, such as when developers leave some wiggle room in their applications, or it can be unintentional, such as when the performance needs of a task are unknown. 6. Schedule Non-Production Virtual Machines the cost of QA, development, staging and testing can be reduced by more than 65% by scheduling non-production VMs to run just during normal working hours, by using utilization statistics to impose more aggressive schedules and some firms have saved more than 80% on the cost of non-production VMs. 7. Take advantage of discounts for repeat customers. If your company runs VMs with predictable workloads around the clock, committing to a 1-year or 3-year level of service can save you up to 57% on pay-as-you-go GCP pricing. These savings don't need any upfront purchases, so they are definitely worth looking into. 8. Move cool data to a lower-cost storage location. Google Cloud Platform offers several storage options based on how frequently data is accessed and how quickly you want to access it. To reduce GCP expenses, a large amount of infrequent accessible data can be moved to lower cost storage. Hope you've understood the concept of control and optimize Google Cloud costs. With this, we conclude this topic. Thank you for watching this video.